In this series of tutorials, we're going to learn how to customize the player in Articulate Storyline. Before we review the player settings, let's look at our course so we can see uh, what the course has and then what should be displayed in our player. So right now when we look at our course, you can see that we have two scenes. Scene 1 is what I call the course scene and that actually has all the slides for the course. and You can see the flow and structure. Then if we come over here to Scene 2, I have a scene that I titled Player Resources. Now you'll notice I have two slides. One's Contacts and the other one's called Resources. And these two slides, while they're part of the course, they're not in the flow of the course. So I'm going to leverage Storyline's ability to take a slide and insert that as a feature on my Player tab. So we're going to see how that works in one of the tutorials. But right now when we look at this, we can see there's two scenes. This scene has all of our course slides and this scene right here has our resource slides. Now let's do a preview of the course and then we'll look at the player settings. And this is a preview of our course. The first thing you'll notice is that the player is gray and that's our default player. However, in the player settings you can change the colors of the player to match the look of your course or your company's branding. Uh, you'll notice over here we have a logo. And then this right here is our sidebar. And on the sidebar right now we have three tabs. There's a menu tab. And the menu tab is going to display all of the slides in your course and we can customize that. And there's a glossary tab. And the glossary is built into Storyline so we can add terms and we can add definitions. So if I click on Diet, you'll see I selected the term and then here's the definition of that. And then we have a Notes tab. If there are notes in your slide, then the notes will display here in the Notes tab. And a lot of people use that uh, for their transcript. Now over here we have our title of the course. We can customize that. And then right here we notice that we have two links. One's a resource link and the other one's a contact link. Now the resource link that we have here, this is generated by Storyline. So there's a resource tab. I can add some resources that the learner can download. In this case you can see I have a PowerPoint file. So I can see the icons. So I have a PowerPoint file. I have a PDF. And then this is a, a link to a website. Now this contact link is a little bit different. If you recall when we looked at the two scenes we had the player resources which we can see here. What we want to do is remove this from our menu and then we have this contact page slide which we can see here. What I'm actually going to do is have the contact slide appear as a player resource. So when I click on this you can see that the slide is actually pulled in as a light box slide. So this allows me to leverage Storyline's capabilities in terms of creating slides and I can add the slides to my player as a feature. So we have a resource link that's auto-generated and we have a contact slide that's actually generated as a slide that we create. And then you can see if we go back to the player menu, uh, that's right here. We're actually going to learn how to insert this as a resource rather than using the default resource. And then down here we see there's a search feature. I can search the text on my slides or in my notes. And then we have some controls. Uh, there's a volume control. This is our Seek bar and the Seek bar has a play button. It has a replay button. And you'll also notice that you can scrub through the Seek bar. Now you can set this to not allow scrubbing or to allow scrubbing. And here are a few extra tips when you're working with your player. One tip is that if you don't have audio in your course, then make sure that you disable the volume control. Because if there's no audio and you do have volume control, the person viewing the course may assume that there is audio and they're just not able to hear it. If you're not using audio, then make sure that you disable the volume control. And I would say the same thing up here. So by default you may have some links up here like the resources link. If you don't have resources, then don't make that available because again, if somebody clicks on it and there's nothing in there, they may think it's broken. And I would say the same thing for notes or glossary. So any of these types of tabs or any feature that you have in your player, if it's not available or being used, then make sure that's turned off. So let's go ahead and look at our player settings. To do that, we're just going to click on the Home tab and then click on Player. Now this is your Player Properties window. Over here you have all the things that you can modify. And then over here we can see a preview of the player and see what the impact is as we change things. The first thing we'll look at is the feature. The features are those things that you can add to your player. So we can see I've got Menu, Glossary, Notes, 
different tabs up here. I've got some player controls. So the features are things that we can modify. And you'll notice that there's a top bar left, top bar right, and sidebar. This right here is your top bar left. This is your top bar right. And then this is your sidebar. Now you'll notice, for example, we have resources and contact links on the top bar right. So we can see top bar right, resources, contact. You can see that right now they're selected. If I want to disable something, I can deselect it. And now there's no longer a resource link. Or I can select it and now it's available. The other thing we can do is move those. So right now the resources on top bar right. You have these up and down arrows. So if I select a feature and I move it up, now I can see it's in top bar left. So here's my resources link. So we're going to go ahead and disable this resources link because we don't want it right now. Now if we come over to the bottom here, we can see that we have our company wellness program. That's our title here. I can show the title. And you can see the player gets refreshed. Or I can select it and make it available again. Uh, the other thing is I can click in here and customize that. We have our sidebar. So in the sidebar is on the left. I can move it to the right. I can move it back to the left. And then down here we have our player controls. Now a few things we notice we can right now we have everything kind of selected. So I can turn the volume on or off. We've got the search bar here. The search bar will only work if I have a side menu. So we have our search. We've disabled that. We'll go ahead and disable the volume. We have our seek bar and you can see I can control the seek bar. I can let the person scrub through it or uh, it can make it read only. I like to let them scrub through it so this way they can drag and go to certain places in that. Otherwise they always have to replay the entire thing. So we'll disable that. And then you notice we have a logo. So I can show the logo or not show the logo. It's not going to show here in the preview but it will be uh, when you preview your course. We're just going to turn that off as well. If you delete the logo you can insert a new one. Then if we look at the previous next buttons, those are created automatically when you create a slide. So Storyline assumes that you have a previous and next button. And you'll notice you have previous and next button triggers. And if you want to modify that, you would change that at the slide level. So you can't modify it here in the player because we don't know what your needs are at the slide level. You may have a quiz question where there is no previous next button and you have a submit button. Or you have no previous next button. So you can turn those things on or off at the slide level. Now let's look at the menu. Now the menu you can see by default it pulls in every single thing that you have. But there are some things that we don't want in our menu. And we'll learn more about the menu customization in the other tutorial. But if you want to turn things on and off you can select something and then you can see you have a whole number of options. You can add or delete or promote or demote uh, the structure in there. And we'll look at that in the other tutorial. Resources. You can see right now I have some resources we added. To add those you can add them here, delete them. We'll, we'll, again we'll look at that in the other tutorial. And glossary the same thing. Uh, you have your terms and you have your definitions. And you can add or delete those things down here. Now to change the color of the player just go up to color and effects. And right now it's set at the default color scheme. We're going to change it to something else. So let's just go ahead and choose olive green. And you can see this is what the olive green uh, color scheme looks like. Now if you want to edit it, you can just click on the show advanced color editing. And you have many options to choose from when you want to edit. So for example, you can select your item. And then you can see there's a whole list of things. Now sometimes I'm not sure what I want to edit. So if I click on this and I change the color, to something really bright, then I can see what the impact is and then I can determine uh, what colors I want. But you'll find that you get used to this pretty quickly and then you can save your color scheme and then you don't have to always edit it when you're building a new course. So a lot of things you can do there. We're just going to come back to our default settings. So we have it gray and you can see how easy that is. And you can change the page background and the font that you're using in the player. Now you have text labels. So let's say for example I want my notes to actually read transcript. I can scroll down and we can see uh, – where is it at here? Here's our notes tab. And I'm going to change the notes tab to read transcript. I'm going to update the preview. 
and now you can see that it's it reads transcript. So whatever you, labels you have on your player, you can change that here. Uh, the other thing is you'll notice you can select different languages as well. So you have a lot of options that way. And then if we look at the other options, you can determine how you want the course to display in the browser. So you can resize the browser to fill the entire computer screen. Uh, you can resize the browser to the optimal size of the course and you can display at the current user size. Uh, the other option, you can lock the player at the optimal size so you're going to get the best looking course or you can have it scale based on the size of the browser window. So as they scale the browser window up or down, the size of the course will scale as well. And then you can also create a separate launch page. So you can see some of these and there's some different options that you have here as well uh, for right to left or left to right language. And that's it for a quick overview of the player settings. In the other tutorials, we'll look at how to customize the menu, how to add resources, and how to add glossary items. For you, it's just a matter of going out there and practicing, making some adjustments to the players, and see what happens.